The NHS defines quality as care that is one, effective, two, safe, and three, provides a positive experience as possible. Explain to me the key foundation for a quality pathology service. Well, the review defined it in its own way, and it said that high quality requires reliable, robust, and responsive pathology services. And by that we mean reliability. If we're given the right question, pathology can provide the right answer. Two, robustness. We have to demonstrate services are seen to be continually improving. And three, responsive. Services that are capable of adjustment and variation based on the changing needs of those we serve. So how do we build on pre and post analytical quality? Well, I think it's really good that we're introducing ISO 15189 because I think this requires much greater emphasis on pre and post analytical parts of our service. So as we go forward, can we sort of summarise the key things that are new in applying our ISO 15189 quality systems over the old CPA approach? Yeah. Well, it's a change in, in, in approach to implementing standards. The staff of St Elsewhere, in my book of course, yeah. uh, ask, they used to ask, does this activity meet the requirements of ISO 15189? Now they ask, yeah. how does this activity ensure the quality of the service to the user? Okay. Now in ISO 15189, there are sort of some buzz phrases like uncertainty. Um, are people getting lost in the detail here, really? Well, of course, there are new uh, phrases and definitions to understand, and that requires some work. In my book, any area of activity is carefully defined. But people do get hung up on particular areas of ISO 15189. It's more about a total change in the way we do quality, and not any one component. But we do need to develop new KPIs because we, we don't have enough at the moment. And to do this, we need really strong professional leadership and a strong role for the professional bodies. David, in the report, KAI's Key Assurance Indicators, which some people would say should be called KPIs, Key Performance Indicators, they're a key part of the report. What do you think about that? I think they're a very good idea, but I have really serious concerns regarding the statistical validity of some of the KAIs, particularly when they are used to evidence improvement or differences in performance between laboratories. There's a huge potential for misuse. I'd actually like to see more interest in the Sigma 95% competence indicator calculator that I've posted on the ACB and Westgard's Okay. websites to prevent these difficulties and make people really understand what they're doing. Can you tell me a little bit about improving communication and understanding the value of pathology? Well I think we need to engage outside the laboratory a lot more than we do and I think we need a more multidisciplinary approach. I think uh, the, the quality review highlighted uh, a number of, uh, of needs including engagement with the users, closer work with multidisciplinary teams within hospital and the community, uh, pre and post, uh, and helping manage, manage patient pathways in primary and secondary care so that we get the best value out of pathology. And I think it's also worth noting that commissioners still have a lack of understanding of the value of the pathology and we must do something to change that. Ian, what is happening in histopathology? Well, I think there are some dramatic changes happening around the corner. Um, Genomics are going to have a big impact, molecular, molecular techniques, but I think particularly the introduction of high-resolution digital images. Uh, and it's been speculated that the provision of virtual 3D images is predicted to revolutionise workflow and reduce time from receiving the sample to providing result interpretation, as well as actually removing a lot of the errors we currently see in the lab process. Navid, when do you think virtual microscopy will come into routine use? Well, it is already here. We are using it in the research uh, and education. It is also used in some of the EQA schemes. It is obviously a challenge to the accepted practice. I think for any new development, we need to show that we can improve the efficiency. The key issue is that there is a cost in pathology and a saving somewhere else in the hospital. What do you think is inhibiting its rapid uptake at the moment? I think, as I said, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging, it's a different practice and the histopathology really needs to, uh, to get on with it and see the, um, the, the, the difference between the normal looking at a microscope and using the virtual, mm -hmm. virtual microscopy. Do you see this 
particular technique coupled with molecular techniques and genomics is radically changing the way in which histopathologists work? Of course, I think it, it, it is actually uh, uh, speeding up the, the process and it is opening a, a new uh, aspect in the, in the pathology, I think. Good. And I, I have a personal view, which is that the role of histopathologists is going to change and that they are going to have a very important role in collating relevant information and actually getting a lot more embedded in, um, in advice and in managing patients. Do, do you think that's uh, a logical uh, sort of view to have? I, I think so. I, I do completely agree with you and I think that's the way forward. Good. Thank you.